This is Ed in San Diego, and you're on Global TV Talk Show. Our special guest today is Emily Braun. Emily, are you in Toronto today? Yes, I am in Toronto for the last uh, three months. I'm not sure where I will be in three months, but now Toronto. Yeah, okay. So we're going to talk today about you, emilybraun.com. Uh, fascinating place, everybody. You, you really ought to go to check it out. Emily Braun. B-R-O-N, emilybraun.com. Uh, she is the authentic being, genuine article in terms of relocated entrepreneurialism, survival against odds. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to read a couple of things here. Okay. She's owner and advisor on international lifestyle consulting. She has no vested interest other than to serve you well. And once again, emilybraun.com. We're going to talk today about specifically remote work and digital nomads and the visa situation and compliance and just what it all means in a practical sense. Let's welcome Emily. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the warm introduction, Edwin. Very appreciate it. And Thank topic you. is long one. We're just starting today, I believe. <laughs> yeah, we're just starting. Okay. Now, many countries are opening up uh, much more than ever before. Uh, and they've even smartened up and approached the idea as a business uh, that is digital nomads working from anywhere. Um, and a lot of people have taken to it, not just Americans and Canadians, but people everywhere. So I don't know how they go about taxing, uh, tracking people. I guess they just pay a fee or something and rather than pay as you go. Because that would be really difficult, I would think. What's your take on all that? Uh, I would tell everyone that my take on this absolutely different from oh. what people should start when they considering uh, being digital nomad or remote workers, which for me, it's not exactly the same. Uh, it's subgroup of a big digital nomad movement. But what I'm saying before to be engaged with this way of thought and actually direction for your relocation, a uh, person should clear understand what kind of lifestyle and what actually he should expect if whatever would be a new place would be really matching like his ideas of today. Taxation is very important. Immigration rules are very important. But my point, you need to be more or less clear. No, no, nobody knows what would be, but you know, what is a country and what is a culture and what you can expect and this or other countries. Yeah, so let me ask you a question, if I can jump in here. Uh, we want to keep the audience engaged in uh, this flow of thoughts and flow of thinking that uh, you're very quickly speaking about. So should people, should I contact an embassy or a consulate and say, I'm going to make up, let's just say Aruba, Okay, or let's just say Costa Rica or Mexico, it doesn't matter. Should I um, be really upfront before I make the move to go there and introduce myself and say, how much does this cost me? What do I have to do? Can I give you a check? Do you want my card now? Or are you going to send me a bill each month that I'm living in this new place? What's, what's the right way to do this? You mean me as a company? I, I, I'm not clear. Well, let's say I'm a digital nomad and, I'm, and I want to move to, say, Belize or, or Curacao or Costa Rica or Mexico. Should I go to the U.S. Embassy uh, or the consulate uh, here in the U.S. before I go and identify myself? Say, I'm not trying to hide. How much money will it cost me? 
first of all, you know, you are the excellent example of the people who might benefit from my consultation, because majority of Americans and Canadians don't know, and not only don't know how to start, where, what to do with. First of all, there are no so many digital nomad visa. There is no belief. There are in certain countries, and like from whatever you mentioned, it's Costa Rica. It's actually Mexico, but without the name of digital nomad visa. There's, uh, as of now, I would say um, 12 uh, full-ledge digital nomad visa with this name. And there are some other types of visa, I mean, in other countries, which you can you know, say they of the same level. And there's already several resources, and I'm looking on these resources, which started to give uh, to provide more information. You don't need to go to American embassy because you're looking to other destination and actually uh, every destination offer different uh, conditions. And it's what I'm about. And you should understand if you're eligible, you know, from different perspective, because every visa has eligibility criteria. It's where you should start from. If you're eligible and, and what country you have in mind, you know, like known visa, Croatia, Bulgaria, like Romania, but it's they not yet fully, um, I would say, clear for many people. Portugal get with very good digital nomad visa, um, Costa Rica, uh, uh, Barbados, uh, several, it started from Caribbean countries. And now it's actually, I would say, competition between governments of this or other countries who are looking you know, what kind of visa they need, uh, they would like to issue in order to attract professional remote workers and actually more uh, capital and investment in their country. Okay, it's so now should I uh, tell them up front that I'm looking at uh, uh, six months? Uh, will they say, okay, this is going to cost you $4,000 or $1,000 or what, or, or what, you know, how do I do this? Um, or do I tell them, well, I don't know how long I'm going to be there. If I don't like it after 30 days, I might leave and go somewhere else. Uh, so tell me up front, how do I plan? Every country is different. Uh -huh, okay. Just to be clear, for North Americans, Canadians, and uh, Americans, there is no six months in European countries. There is maximum three months as a tourist. So if you wish to engage in this lifestyle, you need to start kind of immigration process with this visa. And if you're eligible, meaning you have uh, enough resources to show, like last year, income, uh, income like medical condition and some other condition which are clear but different from country to country you can apply and I can tell you like there's sources already who might work with this kind of uh, visa not me I just collect this information and I'm looking who can help in this or other country so would in they uh, would they require they meaning the whoever we're talking about whatever country uh, would they require uh, proof of uh, me being vaccinated for COVID? Yeah. Uh, would they, and what kind of insurance? Would, would they require that I have some kind of uh, medical plan um, so that um, I'm covered, not in their system, but my own uh, global health plan system? You absolutely correctly touching important lifestyle uh, components of your life. As far as I know, like, for example, Portugal, Portugal care about your uh, medical plan and to be made in country, not in the United States, in own country. That's why there are some companies who now really developing this kind of product. Uh, I mean, global medical uh, uh, coverage for this category of people as you and others. But say Mexico, every country is Mexico doesn't care about your, as of now, doesn't care about your vaccination status. By the way, that's why Mexico attracted many uh, remote workers and digital nomads from many countries over the last 
years and still accepting, I mean, uh, people are coming there. It's very important factor, but country to country are different. And that's why a person need to be clear uh, and to find, you can find this description and I can find for you, for each country, what are the conditions. And it's not so, uh, you know, uh, actually hard condition. It's not full blown immigration, I would say you, but there are certain conditions that should be met before a person is going to a country. Actually, you can after them to change your mind and maybe not to spend um, time say in uh, uh, Croatia, but in order to get this official status, you need to go through the process. Okay, so then, um, if, if they don't want to, let's just say that some country, country A, uh, they have uh, certain regulations that country B doesn't have. So one criteria would be, how long can I stay there? And if they say, well, 30 days and you can renew it, uh, or six months and you can renew it, or three months and you can renew it, so that means that if I don't like them or they don't like me, I could pick up and leave, no penalty, and go next door to Panama or to wherever. So first of all, we need to determine the time you plan to be away. So if it's Mexico, six months, you can go as a, as a tourist without any kind of immigration process involved. If it's Costa Rica or other country, it might be three months. The same is for, for Europe. And uh, I can tell you, and again, uh, uh, being um, having status in one country in Europe, uh, actually helping you to travel or to spend other, you know, time in other countries as well, legally. Again, as American, you cannot spend more than three months in Europe, in Schengen zone. Okay, let's be more uh, correct, in Schengen zone. but. Today, you have uh, Montenegro, the latest uh, visa, uh, which is known Montenegro. Two years, you can live in Montenegro with a renewal option of the next two years when time will come, uh, living and working with this country. Just as the main condition in many of these countries, you bring, uh, you don't take local work, you bring your work and income from outside, but you spend your money and time in local country supporting the local economy. There is a kind of one of the main ideas of this visa. So well, that, that makes total sense. I yes. mean, why, why put a tax on it? Just come and spend your money. Yeah, but as American, you should remember that you will anyway to pay tax in uh, United States, but you will be enjoying your life in, say, Montenegro or actually making your business, uh, you know, develop. And it's very interesting. And even in Montenegro, it's part of European Union. It's kind of not uh, fully. And what, what I like, by the way, in Croatia, because you live in Europe, but kind of outside of Schengen zone. So you can, uh, you can after then spend three months or start three months living in Portugal as a tourist. Three months, it's enough time for you to enjoy the life, to understand uh, the you know, yeah. environment, and actually to think if it's place you wish to live kind of rest of uh, time. And yeah. the time is over, you're going to Montenegro and uh, Croatia, which is outside of Schengen zone, and you can spend and live there where cost of living is cheaper. Uh, climate might be even better uh, than another, like, uh, you know, uh, Sweden, for example. I mean, in winter time and UK time. And there is a combination which give you, uh, I mean, combination of different countries and destinations which you can plan and actually enjoy your life legally working and living in different European countries. Well, thank you very much for that really quick. So we just want to review what we're talking about here. We're talking about remote working or investigating prior to making a long-term purchase investment. Um, and uh, you're saying that in some countries, it's no big deal. You can just go learn on a tourist visa. You can still use your laptop and do your business and, and they're not gonna care, right? As a tourist, like as American, uh, yes, there is certain uh, uh, 
already kind of known the rules what you can spend in uh say in latin america they're more relaxed i would say the condition are more relaxed but or caribbean country depending that's why there is kind of competition between countries and actually visa condition and <clears throat> by the way digital nomad <clears throat> uh, um, guide there is such a guide which actually analyzing and combining the condition cost of uh, you know uh, um, all this procedure time well, what money you need to show uh, and actually lifestyle and cost of living in this other country but um, I am about how to plan and by the way uh, new uh, visas are emerging in Europe in Asia because again there is competition now between countries uh, worldwide who are attracting people in companies to invest in their countries and attracting professionals, digital nomad, remote workers to live at least some time uh, in their countries, uh, not taking local job. There is kind of main uh, work frame. Emily Braun, emilybraun.com, go check it out. And Emily Braun is on LinkedIn and uh, there's a lot of information. So Emily, you've been our guest on Global TV Talk Show uh, many times already, and we've talked about different countries, particularly you're touring around Mexico. But let's talk about some other things right now. And let's just say in Asia. So what does Asia mean? It's a huge place. So what what area like Bali or you know some other place that's maybe not so hot? Uh, you know what, uh, um, you're absolutely correct with your question. I'm specializing in Europe, in European countries and Latin American countries, but obviously I know uh, I'm following what's happening in Asia because uh, uh, some, especially young, uh, younger um, digital nomads prefer uh, Bali, prefer Indonesia. Some people prefer Malaysia. There is a, a very uh, much known destination in Thailand. Chiang Mai, it's the second big city after Bangkok in Thailand, uh, attracted digital nomads for years. There is very big uh, known community of digital nomads in Chiang Mai. There is a very big uh, digital nomad community in Bali. Um, and um, I would say it's two of the main hubs uh, of digital nomads. But with all this, like Malaysia now working to attract more investment in people, coming with kind of uh, this uh, type of uh, visa. And uh, obviously not uh, like not China, not India, mm, and not um, our English speaking countries like uh, New Zealand and Australia. I mean, they attract people and people are involved, uh, involving uh, in the full kind of a blown immigration process, but it's not specifically digital nomad visa, I would say. There's other, you know, startup, other type of visa. Yeah, that's interesting stuff. Okay, so I thank you very much for being on Global TV Talk Show. Before we depart on this abbreviated session, and please come back and let's go deeper. Um, looking ahead now for the rest of this year, because we're already in a sprint towards New Year's and 2023, and hopefully no more disease and no more war. But those things are impacting people, not like a year ago, but they're still on people's minds. Uh, and is there a precaution that I should know about uh, as a consumer? And I'm considering doing some remote work more than I already am. Uh, and is there something that I need, some place to go? Is it you that are the reservoir and the resource uh, for all of this information? As there are uh, information online, but it's very easy to be lost online with a lot of information. Right. So I see myself and my business as concierge, helping people actually to navigate between all these different sources and actually what I'm doing, I'm matching your particular situation, including your age, uh, health state, whatever you like, 
uh, budget, many different lifestyle components. That's why I developed my questionnaire with the different countries and destination to be engaged with. And I can do research, like something obviously I, I, I know I see, but with all this uh, new development, I can tell more visa types are coming in different countries. And I'm not following all countries, but this certain countries, I'm following uh, what is happening in digital nomad and remote work world. By the way, today and tomorrow, uh, I'm participating online in the digital nomad expo. Like I will be listening uh, to other speakers uh, today because it's very dynamic. And by the way, the war in Europe, in Ukraine is still on. And uh, personally, I don't believe that uh, borders in Europe uh, would be the same open uh, as they were before COVID. Uh, as we see, there is no go back. Uh, we will never be living in 2019, and we don't know exactly uh, what uh, you know future will bring us. What I'm uh, saying, you need to be prepared, and you need to do it legally. I mean, to go to Europe. By the way, if you need just to spend one, two months in a country, uh, one country and another, you don't need visa, okay? You're just tourist, you can work, nobody asking you what you're doing. Uh, but if you're in Schengen zone country and you want, for example, to live months or two in Portugal and months or two in uh, Czechia and months or two in Germany, you already, uh, you know, um, you are not tourist. You're already kind of illegally spending time in Europe and you can be stopped just to, on the border. I mean, it's what people need to consider. So uh, come to me when you have uh, really seriously thinking about where to spend uh, time for the next six months, I would say seriously working. And when you have already work, I mean, online work that you can take with you whenever you will be you know, heading, that is very important. And speaking about Europe, uh, I was uh, myself you know, promoting Europe still uh, over the last year, like life as a digital nomad. And I was planning to go myself to spend winter, but uh, look at the glooming economical uh, uh, forecast for uh, European cost of living. Uh, I was not considering a kind of to work for Europeans because my main market is United States and Canada, but I see that a lot of people should be reconsidering maybe their plans based on uh, what's happening. And it's serious because you're going actually to enjoy your life to, you know, there's different reasons why people are going uh, to, to live in, uh, say, in Croatia. I, I was planning to spend some time myself in Croatia and Montenegro and Bulgaria, but I'm looking now carefully on the development on this uh, side. Mm, but again, it might be temporary. We'll see what's going to be. So when you think about your future in regards to where you would relocate even part-time, it's what I mean by part-time uh, relocation, using digital nomad visa or remote work condition, it's one of the options that people already kind of entertaining and using and probably would be even more in near future. Emilybron.com. Emily Braun, thank you again for all of this really practical information. I think people need more clarification on some of these things we were talking about. So contact Emily, uh, emilybron.com, and you'll be able to get you know, all her numbers and get a lot more information. Thank you, come back soon. Thank you, Edwin. Always uh, happy to, to help you <laughs> personally and everyone who is listening to us. Thanks a lot, take care, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.